Come on, let's lift him up right now. Oh, for he is great and greatly to be praised. Come on, let's magnify him. Come on, don't stop. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. He's the one true God. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves all of our adulation. Oh, it's the real reason why we're here. We're here to worship Him. We're here to praise Him. We're not just here to eat out of His hand, but we're here to give Him glory and to give Him praise and to give Him honor. Come on, let's do it right now. Lift Him up, lift Him up, lift Him up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be back in the house of God. I went and listened to Brother Luke uh, during the middle of the day today, and I want to commend him. What a phenomenal message this morning. I want to commend Souls Harbor for the response and getting behind him and just going along like we're supposed to. Going along just like we're supposed to. And I just want to thank each and every one of you that's in the house tonight. I'm eager to see what the Lord is going to have done at the end of this service. I want to go ahead and just give my pastor double honor. I love him so much. I want to give his family double honor. They also share in the same burden that he carries, and they deserve our they deserve all the honor as well. And I, I'm so thankful for him. I appreciate him having enough confidence in me to allow me to stand here in this desk. I know that I say it every time I preach, but trust in this. If you hear nothing else from me, every time I stand behind his pulpit, I will give him honor. It's no light thing to me that I get to stand here and preach in his absence. And I'm just thankful for his confidence. If you have your Bible, you can turn to 1 Kings chapter 21. Start in verse 1, and the scripture says, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Aham, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it. Or if it seems good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. You can turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We will begin in verse 1. And the scripture says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, at that day, the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God, Shewing himself that he is God. You place your Bibles down and let's lift our hands up for just a moment. God, we come before you tonight. God, we need you in this name you can be seated is there anybody in the house that needs the Holy Ghost is there anybody in the house that needs healing is there anybody in the house that needs a financial breakthrough is there anybody in the house that wants to see the Lord move is there anybody in the house that believes in revival is there anybody in the house that wants to knock doors is there anybody in the house that believes that God still performs miracles? That's good. Because I'm preaching to every one of you in the house tonight. 
And I want to tell you, we may start off a little bit rocky because I want to delve into something that I felt in the spirit recently. But in the end, we're going we're gonna to shove it in the devil's face. And we're going to let him know uh, that we're victorious. And we're going to let him know uh, that we serve the one and only true God. uh, And that we don't really care what he's got to say about it. Hallelujah. Amen. In in Kings, uh, we start off reading about Ahab. And if you delve back into the history of Ahab very much, you'll find that he's the seventh king of Israel. And uh, he was a very sinful king. In fact, uh, the Bible describes him as being the king that most provoked the wrath of the Lord. I want to tell you that he did not perform what he did in ignorance. His decisions were not made because he had no knowledge. He was of the lineage of a house that was from Israel. He knew the custom and he knew the law. He knew what was holy and what was righteous and what was not. And yet of his own volition and of his own choice, he chose to build a temple unto Baal and usher in false religion into Israel. Uh, Every choice that he made, uh, he was well aware that it was wrong, uh, and he did it for himself. Uh, You find as you begin to study in the first years of his reign, uh, he would go to war and be victorious. uh, And he began to build cities, uh, and he began to have great success uh, as a leader. Uh, But it's not very far in his kingship. Uh, For whatever reason, he began to do the works uh, that were more pleasing unto himself. Uh, He began to do the works uh, that made him feel better and made him be easier in life. He began to do things that would lift him up. I want to point out to you very, very quickly because I'm eager to get on to the next part of this. In today's day that we live in, there are men and women among us that know what is righteous and what is holy. They were brought up in the doctrine of the apostles and they're well aware of what thus saith the word of the Lord. And yet we begin to look across the landscape of Pentecost today and we're watching as delusion is setting in and we're watching as people are choosing an easier path and we're watching as a little bit at a time we're replacing the move of God with lights and psychology and smoke machines and plays and art rather than just the good old fashioned Holy Ghost. I don't really understand what's driving people to do it. I don't quite get it because somehow we used to be a religion that was known for miracles and was known for deliverance and was known for revival and suddenly more than that we become known as a religion that's full of talent and it's full of show and it's full of numbers and it's full of big buildings and fancy nice cars and I'm for all of that if God blesses you with it good but that can't be the focus we can't focus on the bells and whistles I'm sorry if your choir gets up and they've got a choreographed dance but there's no anointing there's something wrong with that when your lead singers are are, are moonlighting on Friday night at the local at the local bar singing the songs of the devil and then trying to sing on Sunday morning. There's something wrong with that. When our ministers are standing in the pulpit and they're caring more about what's in their pocketbook and our singers and musicians are caring more about if the church will write them a check or not. There's something wrong with that. And when the saints of God they begin to dress how they want because it's just easier and they begin to go where they want because it's just easier and they begin to download certain things because it's just easier and we start watching it as suddenly Pentecostals are showing up on Friday nights to the football games and they're showing up on Saturdays to the football games and they're showing up for basketball season and they're showing up for baseball season and they're there and they're loud and they're proud and they're going to go back to church on Sunday and try to manufacture a move of God there's something wrong with that there's something wrong with that 
You don't get there in a moment's time. It's a gradual thing. It's a gradual thing. The scripture said, oh, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter. Oh, my God. If somebody comes to you with a spirit of delusion on them, don't you be troubled with it. Don't you be shaken by it. Oh, don't you let them. I'll convince you that because they have 500 people oh, in their sanctuary and because they're all driving Lexuses and they're all living in nice houses, their reward's here. It ain't going to be in heaven. They're getting their reward right now. Don't you be shook up by that. Don't you be shook up by their new doctrine that appeals to the ears of men. Don't you be shook uh, when they begin to write out uh, their own versions uh, of the Bible. When they begin to change scriptures uh, here and there uh, and put their own stamp on it. uh, Because it's easier. uh, It's easier to live uh, behind your own desire. Uh, It's easier to live uh, where everybody else wants to go. Uh, It's a whole lot easier uh, to be a part of the herd uh, than it is to stand on the outskirts uh, and say, Thus saith the Lord. Uh, Thus saith the word of the Lord. Uh, Thus saith the word of the Lord. Don't you be shaken. Let no man deceive ye by any means. For that day shall not come unless there come a falling away first. Hear me. To have anointing in your life, it's no simple thing. Oh, to show up and have people knocking doors and watching as they're running to the altars and being delivered from their bondage and having their mind changed and having them be filled with the Holy Ghost for the very first time. There's nothing easy about about that. There's nothing simple about that. That takes consecration. That takes sacrifice. That takes effort. It's hard. It's not easy. It takes consistent commitment again and again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 365. It never stops. Oh, but it's so much easier to just say the words that appeal to everybody. It's so much easier to preach the message that was written by the board it's so much easier oh my god to pray the prayer that somebody just wrote up for me so now it's no longer being inspired by the Holy Ghost but it's all man made it's all written by the hand of man man has his stamp on it and God has nothing to do with it don't you fall prey to that doctrine Don't you fall prey to it. I know it looks flashy. I know it looks fun. I know it looks like they're doing all right. But hear me. We laugh and we joke about the smoke machines and the light shows and the designated dancers and the this and the that. But really and truly, it's not funny because the reason why they've got the smoke machines and the reason why they're having to pay professionals to come in and make some kind of crazy light show on the wall like you're in some kind of disco room is because the presence of God is no longer with them. The presence of God is no longer in their prayer. The presence of God is no longer in their worship. Their ministers are speaking appealing words but they're not speaking words that are life changing because it's their own tongue that guides them and not the tongue guided by the Holy Ghost. Don't you be deceived by that doctrine. Be careful who you hear. Be careful what you sing. We don't talk about it enough in Pentecost. I've heard the statement come across this pulpit a hundred times. If they've got a pair of ripped jeans on and a beard, don't tell me what thus saith the Lord. I don't need to hear it. I want to hear the word of God from someone that's pure and holy and righteous. Let me tell you, same goes for me when it comes to the music coming into my ears. My God, if they believe and preach a deluded gospel and they believe and preach a deluded way don't you let me hear it I don't want to 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 hear it (laughs) 
Listen, for any of that to affect you, the scripture said that first there has to come a falling away. Oh, first, before you're going to be shook by that doctrine, before you're going to be shook by the lies of the enemy, before you're going to be shook by the culture of this world, there has to be a falling away in you. There has to become something in you that's slack. There has to become something in you that just begins to listen to the words that appeal to you but don't actually change you and slowly but surely you get an appetite for self-help instead of spiritual help you find yourself with an appetite for the thing that makes you feel good instead of the thing that makes you run to the altar get it out get it out get it out get it out It's sad that that's what's mainstream. It's sad that that's what's promoted. I'm so glad over the last five years, it seems, and maybe it's just because I'm coming out of the darkness a little bit and crawling out from under my rock, but I'm so happy that on YouTube and on Facebook now, you can find real apostolic preaching and you can find real apostolic singing and you can find... Because the devil ain't never hesitated to use those platforms. He's got them on there. And they're feeding it into this world. And if we don't give them something else to eat, they're going to die from malnutrition. It's my responsibility. Your responsibility. We've got to have this. We've got to have the real. We, we, we've got to have the real Holy Ghost operating in our prayer rooms. We've got to have the real Holy Ghost operating in our homes. We've got to have the real Holy Ghost operating in our altars. We can't just have people with half Holy Ghost laying hands on those that need delivered. We're going to get past this. But it's in my spirit and it's burning and it's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. It's got to go. Because if I don't cry out and let the voice of God be heard, I'll be held responsible. The blood will be on my hands. If I don't let the word of God fly, I don't know who you are. I don't really know why I'm preaching this. You may not even be in this house, but don't you find yourself falling away deceived by the doctrine of men? Quit reading their commentaries. Quit hitting. Oh, quit listening to their TED Talks. Quit listening to their podcast. Quit listening to their deluded mess. That, that. I've heard this my whole life. And sometimes I roll my eyes at it. Mainly when I was young. I think I told my wife this a couple times. And the first couple times I told her, I think she rolled her eyes at me. But I would always laugh at young ladies that would... That would buy a certain dress or buy a certain skirt. And the question would be, hey, if I try this on, not to me, hallelujah. (laughs) But I've heard them say it to their mamas. Hey, I I bought this, I bought this dress and this skirt. If I put it on, will you come check and make sure it's holy? Honey, listen, if you got a check to make sure that it's holy, it's probably not holy. And the same applies when it comes to preaching and teaching and the voices that are there. If you got to have somebody tell you whether or not it's holy, it's probably not holy. When the milk smells funny in the refrigerator, you don't taste it to find out if it's nasty. You just pour it out. You better do that with your spiritual life too. If it smells nasty. Oh, if it looks like it could be off colored. Oh, if it looks like it's not straight down the line. Pour it out. 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 Don't you give, don't you give an inch for the devil to work with. Listen, I know clothes are hard to find, especially for our young ladies. But listen to me. There are influencers out there and everywhere you look now. There's no longer just clothes salesmen. They sell clothes and they're influencers. There's no longer people that have Bibles that they, you know, they buy in the leather and pretty stuff. 
they sell the cover and they're an influencer and a lot of times when you buy stuff from them you have to get these little letters in the mail and you, you have to get these little emails or, or there's a little video that you have to watch and, and this and the other listen to me I don't care if it's the only place that you can find a dress that's holy don't listen to their voice don't listen to their voice don't you hear their half truth don't you listen to their partial holiness Because listen to me, a lot of times you begin to dig and you'll find that somewhere down the line, it wasn't that long ago that probably either their grandfather or their grandfather's father or somebody along those lines was full-blown Pentecost. They were full-blown preachers. They were full-blown singers. They were full-blown saints of God that sat in the pew and raised their head, their hands and said yea and amen to the word of the Lord. And they probably sacrificed and gave tithes and offerings to build a Pentecostal apostolic doctrine preaching church somewhere along the line if you begin to dig back in their lineage you'll find that probably there was a faith healer in their lineage and probably there was a door knocker in their lineage and probably there was a minister that would go to the prisons and preach the truth to those that were incarcerated if you keep digging you'll probably find that holiness is in there somewhere but somewhere along the line they begin a falling away it might have been with them or it might have been with their mama and daddy but suddenly you find that the lineage is no longer being carried forward suddenly you find that the doctrine of their fathers is gone and it's done for and they've sold out their birthright they've given it up to ahab Hey, he preaches about the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir, I hear you. Oh, I hear you. He preaches about the Holy Ghost, but does he have the Holy Ghost? Hey, when he preaches, he preaches about chains being broken and mountains being moved. Oh, yes, sir, I hear you. Oh, but, but what does he believe? What's on the inside? What's in his heart? Is it self-glorification? Or is there real apostolic anointing behind his words? And suddenly, Ahab is at our door. And we look at Ahab, and we probably know Ahab. And he's probably been our friend, and we still love him. And she, oh, Jesus, I'm ready to get to the next part. Uh, We probably knew him. We probably knocked doors with him. We, we, probably, we probably shouted with him. We probably prayed with him. And somewhere along the line, he fell away. And now he's back, and he wants mine too. He wants me to join him too. He's knocking on my door. Hey, Brother Allen, would you sell me your birthright? Hey, Brother Allen, would you give me that that the elders have handed to you? Oh, hey, sister, I just wanted to come and see if we could sit down and talk about why I think that I've learned more about the Bible than you have because you have a closed mind and and, uh, you've heard it. I've heard it. You know what I'm talking about. They come to you and they're deluded and they're lost and we love them and we want them to come back and we want them to be full but we can't partake in their doctrine don't you be deceived by the idea that if you'll just give a little they'll come back it never works out that way if you give a little you'll end up going downhill it's just the facts I'm not going to argue with you If you want to go dig and look into statistics and empirical data, it's there for you. And it's undeniable. And if if you if you want to tell your eyes that they're not seeing what they're seeing in the world we live in today, it seems like every time we turn around, somebody that we used to rub shoulders with and we used to pray with and love with and we still love them. But suddenly we're no longer shoulder to shoulder with them. If you have a scripture, you can put it up. You don't have to try to keep up with me here because I'm fixing to read several scriptures. In Joel chapter 2, starting in verse 21, the scripture says, Fear not, O land, 
Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. Listen, 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 listen. This is obviously talking about end time prophecy. And I don't know what world you're living in, but we're living in it right now. I understand. We haven't been stamped in the forehead yet. And they're not going door to door dragging us out of our houses here in the United States of America. But if you're blind to the fact that we have reached a state of immorality, oh, that there is no denying we live in the end time. We are here in the last days. We're watching as what used to be up is now down. And what used to be down is now up. We're watching and seeing as our society and our culture is being eaten away slowly but surely like and under caterpillars and palmer worms a little at a time that that used to be perverse is now accepted and that that now was accepted is suddenly persecuted you can turn a blind eye to it if you want to but it's here and we're living in it but Fear not. The Lord said, oh, that there would be blessing in the end time. There would be blessing in the end time. There would be blessings in the end time. And I don't exactly know what to tell you wheat stands for. Maybe it stands for wheat. I think it stands for spiritual things. I feel like it. But what I do know is the next portion of the scripture. And in 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 16, a confirmation of the prophecy says, But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and all my servants and all my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy they shall prophesy I understand all the bad I understand all the delusion but hear me well in the last days there's going to be miracles in the last days He's still filling people with the Holy Ghost. And in the last days, there's still deliverance. There's still victory. There's still meat to be had in the house of the Lord. Hear me across the landscape of Pentecostal. I'm watching and seeing as young men and young women are starting to hear the voice of the elders. Oh, and some Naboths are being born and they're looking at Ahab and they're saying, you can't have my birthright. You can't have what my father's handed to me. You can't have my freedom. You can't have my victory. You can't have my anointing. Keep your delusion. Keep your half truth. Keep your half Holy Ghost. I want the real. I want the real. 
and we're watching as voices are being born across Pentecost that stand behind desks and they don't have quite as many gray hairs in their head just yet but they're preaching the same thing that they were preaching all the way back oh when the Holy Ghost began to be poured out for the very first time on the day of Pentecost they're preaching the apostolic doctrine they're preaching the apostolic doctrine and the gifts, the gifts are beginning to turn and churn, and they're beginning to be born. Hey, it's happening in this house. There's young men. Oh, and there's folks. Oh, I don't even know what you call young anymore. I'm 31. I don't even know what young and old is anymore. But there's men and there's women across this house that suddenly they're beginning to dream dreams and see visions on a regular basis. It's no longer the abnormal, but suddenly it's the normal, and you're watching as people that five years ago didn't know up from down are laying hands on the sick and they're being healed and they're laying hands on the chains and the shackles are coming up. Hey, hey, devil, guess what? You tried hard, but we're not here to molly grub tonight. We're here to preach about a good report. Come on, huh? come try to get it some more, devil. Huh? Come on, devil. Huh? Come try to get it some more. Huh? We're here. Huh? We're not going anywhere. Huh? We're not. Co- the gifts are turning. Huh? The gifts are burning. Huh? Oh, we're still preaching it. Come on, Ahab. Come on. Come try to tell me one more time about your doctrine. Because, honey, I'm going to give everything I got in me to turn your mind back to the truth. I'm going to arm you up with love. And every time you give me your half-truth, I'm going to feed it back to you in a whole truth. Oh, Every time you tell me why I don't have to do this anymore and I don't have to do that anymore, I'm going to ask you, when's the last time you saw cancer be healed? When's the last time you saw a deaf be open when's the last time you saw a miracle and I'm going to tell you about the last time I saw about it come on Ahab I got a good report if you hear the voices of this day and age. They want to tell you that you're not cool and you're not hip. My Lord, I broke my brand new shoe. I have to get that to the shop quick. I plan on wearing these next Friday night. It's okay, baby. I think I think they're going to be fixed. Anyway, hear me. I don't know why. You know, you know how we like to pretend? Like, oh, the government don't have nothing on me. You ain't gonna get coffee in the morning? <clears throat> they don't know nothing about me. But all of a sudden, everywhere I look, there's conference stuff popping up on my phone. Whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> on my email. My, I didn't realize how many conferences of like all denominations. I thought we did that. I'm just kidding. I know they did it too, but I didn't realize there were so many. And I've seen so many names this week. <laughs> One was real comical. I think they meant to spell it steak. Like I've got a steak in this. But on their advertisement they had, they had spelled it steak as in S-T-E. A, you know, like, like the meat. And maybe that's what they meant too. I don't know now that I think about it. But here's my point. Here we are. We're right on the precipice. Two weeks. Not this Friday night. Next Friday night. We're going to go. We're going to worship. We're going to praise. Brother Marks is going to get up. He's going to preach. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. It's going to be earth shattering and world changing if you'll let it. And we're going to come back Saturday. And there are some phenomenal teachers that are going to be here. And if you'll let it, it'll change you. But if you would like, apparently, I have 35 different options for you to go to next Friday night. (laughs) And the difference is, they're going to get up there. They're going to laugh. 
and they're going to have fun, and they're going to say things that tickle your ears. And at the end, they're going to invite you down for a little, a little prayer, and they're going to teach you some kind of redemptive something or another to, to recite. And at the end of the day, you're going to walk out of there, and you're going to be just the same as when you come in there. <clears throat> Listen, I'm not talking about instantly. Look, a, 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 somebody who's just a good speaker can inspire you to change for a little bit. You, 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 can, you can take some words that somebody says and put it up on your mirror every morning and go be inspired by that. And it'll last for a little while. Oh, but after a while, the power of those words, if there's no substance showing up in your life, they'll begin to just not mean as much to you. And they'll still be good and they'll still tickle your ears. But if there's no change on the inside, if there's no difference in who you were, then when you begin to live by that mantra, oh, it won't be long. It'll go to the wayside. That's the difference, folks. That's the difference in what we've got and what they've got. There's substance behind it. There's things happening. The miraculous is still going on the life changing is still going on Revival is still real. Revival is still real. It's not a thing of yesterday. It's not a thing of the has been. It's not a thing of the used to. No, 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 no. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Ahab, we're still having revival. Ahab, we're still having revival. We held on to it. And now there's a good report in the land. My, my, my. I look out here, so much potential. So much potential in these young people right here. But on the other side of those roads, I'm looking out there at faces, <clears throat> and I just wonder to myself when the day's going to come Woo, where we watch as a manifestation of the Holy Ghost not only comes on you in tongue and not only comes on you where you're shaking and you're quaking in the aisle but we hear about Monday when you went to work and your co-worker told you that they had cancer and you looked at them and you didn't say honey we'll put you on the prayer list and would you like a prayer cloth but instead you turned and looked at them and said well I serve Jesus and he can heal you could I lay hands on you and we're going to hear the report that you reached back and you laid hands and you said thus saith the Lord be healed be healed be and they're cancer free I can't wait to hear about how somebody else finally decided to operate in their calling oh and they show up with a rented bus because we ain't got enough buses oh and there's a whole nother route I can't wait to see it I can't wait to what what are you waiting on? What are you? Join in. Be a part of the good report. Join in. Come on, come on. Ahab already took his best shot. Ahab already dressed it up and made it as pretty as he could. And we already decided, we already survived the time of the canker worm. We already survived the time of the palmer worm. We've already seen others fall away. Oh, but we're still here. We're still in the house. We're still operating. We still have a good report. I don't know. I really envision this going differently. There's like, I feel like there's 20 people that's like really on board. And then I feel like there's a lot of people that are kind of on board. And there's a lot of people that are door dashing already. <laughs> and my Lord, we're just preaching about Pentecost. <laughs> I'm not trying to drag nobody through the mud. I'm not trying to make you run up here in fear and embarrassment and repent. I'm just talking about the good things of God that's going on right now. My God, if we can't shout about that, if we can't get out of our pew over that, if we can't... Ah! Listen, if you're in this house tonight, Brother Zane, whatever you want to, 
you just take off, man. I'm going to kind of drift here for a minute. Play some music to remind me. <clears throat> if you're in the house and you've been hearing the voice of Ahab, listen to me. It's not like he came to him and said, I'm going to be at your house tomorrow and I want the keys. <clears throat> that's not what he did. And that's never what Ahab does. He doesn't come to you and say, tomorrow morning, we've got a list. And uh, everybody that's in your church, their world's going to be in disaster. Everybody that, it can happen. It's happening around the world. And one day it's coming here. You might as well get ready for it. But right now, the way Ahab operates, where we're at, he wants to give you something that le looks at least like it's the same value as what you got. See, he's just telling you, <clears throat> we're still going to church. We're not forsaking together the assembly. You know, we're still, once a week, we're going and we're praising God and this, that, and the other. And then like five times the rest of the week, we've got these pretty little classes. And, mm. <clears throat> oh, prayer? Yeah, we do that. When? Well, when we can fit it in. <clears throat> but but don't worry, we've got a class about prayer. It's there, y'all. It's there. It's, it's <clears throat> We as a culture, it, it, listen, it, I love podcasts. But my Lord, that, that can't be my substance. I, I can't listen to somebody else talking about the word of the Lord and that be the only thing that I grab onto. I can't listen to other people talk about how God moves and is moving and, and that's the only thing I grab onto. I got to get beyond that. But our culture today, that's what we want to do. We want to sit and talk about it. We just want to We just want to talk about it and there's no action. We just talk about what the Lord does and we talk about how the church is growing and we talk about this, that, and the other and it's like, mm, it's so good. And we walk away from our coffee shop meeting and we're like, bless it, Lord, pumpkin spice is back and the Lord's moving. It's fall, y'all. Get ready for the hayride. And in the meantime, the Lord's just, he's just up there and he's like, I know there's some of them there that are, look, I, I can only give them so many gifts. I need somebody else to give a gift to. Like they're going to be overwhelmed. They, they can't operate all the time in all of them. I need somebody else to see a vision. I, I, I need somebody else to dream a dream. Poor so-and-so's so overworked with dreams right now, they don't know if they need to call pastor or the hospital. I need somebody else to give a dream to. Brother Luke can't be everywhere. I need somebody else to teach a Bible study. I can't, I can't have one person praying all the prayers of faith. There's, there's got to be somebody else. This has got to be a multi-generational thing, people. This has got to be across the board for us. We, we all have to operate. We all have to operate. We all have to operate. Listen, I cannot do what Brother Masters can do. I can't do what Brother Craig does. I can't do what Brother Luke does. I surely can't do any of y'all's job that starts with sister. Where is Sister Janae at? Is she here? She's so, sister, listen. I'm telling you right now, if they decided to be funny and put you in my class and me in your class, I feel the call to be somewhere else. I just, no, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. But, but hear me. I can't, I can't function where she functions. That's not where God needs me to be plugged in. That's not where God plugged me in. Because He knows who I am. And He knows who you are. And I'm looking at a people. You're in this house tonight. And I don't know every detail about your life. But I do know this. You're hearing the same things that I'm hearing. You're seeing the same things that I'm seeing. And yet you're here. Which means, at least to a certain extent... You've repelled Ahab. You have. Pat yourself on the back, please. I beg you. Because he comes with his own religion. He comes with his own God. And not only that, he's got his own plan for your vineyard. He's got his own plan for your birthright. And listen, it's the old American story. It's in about 47,000 different westerns. 
city boy comes to the country and wants to buy the ranch. We gotta keep them out, you know. We wanna raise cows. But it's goofy. But on the other hand, that's how they see us. They see us as somehow we're uneducated and we're funny and we're we don't think right. And I hate this statement and I keep hearing it more and more lately, and maybe it's just because my phone hears me gripe about it. But if I hear the word fringe cult one more time, there's actually two words in there. They have these buzzwords and these buzz phrases because they're trying to insult us, but they want to do it in the politically correct way. I want you to feel good about it. <laughs> they have, he, he, he's just trying to get you to do it a little at a time. Remember, like, he's growing grapes, and he tells him, not that I want you to quit farming. I don't want you to take this ground and level it and quit using it. I just want you to grow something else here and let it be for my use and let it be for my... And and in return, I'm going to give you a lot of money and I'm going to give you position and I'm going to build you something bigger and better. I just want this. And really, that's what it all boils down to. All the deception, all the flash, all the delusion, all of it. They're just trying to find a way to convince you that what they have is better. And if you're in this house tonight, you've repelled it. And you've got a good report. But can I tell you, God's not done in this last day. God's not done in this last day. There's so much more. He's pouring His Spirit out. The prophecy that was uttered all the way back by the prophet Joel, it's taking place. You hear me? You don't even know all the young people. And I, beyond the young people, there's people in this church that are finding themselves being used by gifts that they've never used before. And they're having to have meetings with pastor and sister writer and elders and this, that, and the other because they never treaded this water. And suddenly they found themselves there. And Ahab's knocking on the door even more, even more. And he's trying to do his best to convince them. You don't, you don't have to have that dream. Dream my dream. See, my dream, I'll never speak to you in type and shadows. I'll speak to you in a language you understand. See, my dream, it'll be black and white, straightforward. You'll never have to question what's in front of you. It's, it's either going to be this or that. And it's a dream that you can comprehend. And it's a dream that appeals to you. But at the end of the day, it's not the birthright. It's not the birthright. I bring a good report tonight. We're strong. All all the delusion, all the confusion, all, all the mess, and you're in this house. And guess what? All across this land and all across this world, you could spin the globe and put your finger there there's probably somebody there right now that believes just like you and preaches just like you and worships just like you and is living for God just like you and guess what they have a good report too because they're dreaming dreams and they're seeing visions and they're giving tongues and interpretation and they're laying hands on the sick and they're being healed you can all stand We're going to make our way down to this altar. And boy, you know, I, I don't know what your desire is. I don't know what your hunger is. I can't rah-rah you into pursuing the things of God. But hear me. Next Friday night, there's not this Friday, next Friday, next week, there's going to be earth-shattering move of the Holy Ghost that's going to echo into the atmosphere of your world and my world and we're going to feel the residual effects all around us and most assuredly let me tell you this you're going to have resistance and Ahab will be at your door and he'll have a different religion for you he'll have a different walk for you he'll have a different move for you
but we're going to be a part of the good report. No one is going to say that you and I have fallen away. No one's going to look at you and I and say that we're trees that don't bear fruit. And no one's going to look at you and I and say that we're barren. And no one's going to look at us and say they're not fulfilling their potential. They're going to see us and they're going to know that there's a good report in the land. If God's been tugging on your heart about being used in the gifts. Listen, I don't know who you are, but multiple times over the last couple months, a tongue has went forth and there has been long pauses before the interpretation has come out because God has been knocking on somebody's door and you just haven't had the confidence to open your mouth and let it fly. Listen, tonight you can get confirmation and you can know it's the end time and that gifts for you. And the next time when it comes out, you're going to open your mouth and you're going to let it fly. And if you're in this house and you need a healing, if you'll come forward tonight, we'll lay hands on you, anointing your head with oil and praying the prayer of faith. And we will watch as you are healed. We'll watch as you are healed physically, spiritually, mentally. And if you need deliverance tonight, if there is addiction that has got a hold of your life, I have a good report for you. Deliverance, it's here in the house. It's here in the house. Hear me? It's here in the house. And if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, you've never felt what it feels like to have the power of God running through you until there is a language that you can't understand pouring out of your mouth. I have a good report for you. It's here in the house. And it's here for you. It's here for you. It's here for you. It's here for you. And listen to me. It's substance. It's life-changing substance. You'll walk out of here, and it will never be the same. Nothing will ever be the same. For forever and ever and ever, you'll know that He's really there. He's really there. It's not just words. It's not just words. I need some sisters right now. She's made her move. Oh, I need some sisters. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Listen to me. It's not just words from another man. It's not just words from another woman. It's not just words from somebody else that let you down. It's real. I have a good report for you. It's real. In all the confusion. In all the mess you've heard from our culture about how to help yourself and you've tried it and you've given it all you've gotten and it didn't work. This is real. I have a good report for you. This is real. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let's start pushing. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. Listen, if nothing else applies to you, there's one, two, three, four. There's four. Four right here. Hands raised. Pushing. They need something. Come on. You're part of the good report. You're part of the good report. You're part of the church. Come. Please. Please. Sister Deanne, come on. Please. Oh, sisters that have the Holy Ghost. Brothers that have the Holy Ghost. Don't stand on the side. Don't stand on the side. We're part of the good report. We're part of the good report. Come on. Right now, one mind, one accord. Our mind is only on one thing. God's going to move. God's going to move. Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.